Good afternoon. Welcome to K24 News Cup this afternoon. Thank you for joining us. My name is Shiksha Arora, joined by sign language interpreter this afternoon. That's Walter. So, and of course, we will be giving to you the top stories of the day and making it right to the top this bulletin with Marianne Jabet Kitani. The estranged wife of Meru Senator, that's Mithika Linturi, has taken to the witness stand for the second day. Of course, she has affirmed that she was indeed married to Meru Senator Mithika Linturi. She formerly worked as the Chief of State and Deputy President William Ruto's office. And she told the court during a cross-examination that uh, she married Linturi in a customary marriage ceremony in 2016. This court case is still ongoing. We'll be talking to our reporter, Lenox Sengre, who is at Milimani Law Courts and he will be giving us the latest from the court. Uh, to you, um, Shiksha, we have uh, been following on the uh, Maria Nikitang and Senator, uh, that is Mithika Linturi's case that kicked off this morning, entering the second day into where uh, uh, Marianne's lawyer was cross-examining uh, his her testimony in regard to the battle in the property wrangles and the divorce case that has been uh, before uh, the chief magistrate at the Milimani Law Court. For today, what really ensued is that, you know, Miriam, Miriam was telling the court what really transpired in Nandi village when the elders from uh, Meru County really went to pay the dowry. And it has emerged that, you know, Lintika, Mithika Linturi took a hundred thousand to really uh, take to uh, Miriam's family. That is for dowry payment. And again, she has also emerged, it has also emerged Mind in court that Mithika Linturi really paid a, a present the, the, in that case to uh, Marianne mother that is a, a Nissan X Trail that was also pray, paid as a present to uh, Marianne's parent. For today, what really ensued is all about you know his her lawyer really examining what really ensued at the Nandi village. Joining me on set, Shiksha is uh, Marianne lawyer who will also be giving us an insight of what they're expecting. Remember, this is a case that is coming by on 28th, that is next, uh, this month, really. I don't know what they're going to file. There's an application they have made, but he will be telling us an insight of what they're seeking the court really to give them uh, that 28th this month. Thank you, sir, Mr. Mogaka. What should we expect on that 28th? What we are trying to answer <laughs> Here is a question Marianne has asked, and it is really a question most Kenyan women have asked. And uh, where a man has no capacity to marry, a man has taken a wife. What protections do Kenyan women have when this man goes to marry them after he's already married? That is Marianne's question. Marianne was taken as a girlfriend, was taken as a fiancé was taken through a wedding ceremony, went through a marriage, and has come to court to discover or be told that she was a visitor the entire time. This is not her. She's not the only one who has asked this question. And our question to the court and to the laws of Kenya is where do Kenyan women's protection start and where do they end? If Senator Linturi is indeed found to have known that she was married, and contracted a new marriage. Under the law 171, section 171 of the penal code, that is bigamy, a criminal offense. So for today, many Kenyans were expecting that uh, Marianne, uh, that is Kitan, would uh, really display a video before the court. What really transpired, This because this was the expectation, you sworn an affidavit that you will be displaying a video before the court. What, how did it go? We did not have enough time. The videos are coming. The photographs are coming. A hundred witnesses have been lined up, they will all come to court. The question we wanted to arise today was the issue that a relationship did ensue. An engagement was proposed by the respondent and a marriage ceremony was carried out. This had to be outlined to the court in statement form before videos for public purposes were released. Yes? And as I was saying before, the issue here is not just Marianne. The Kenyan legal system and indeed public knowledge about women's protections 
when men are multi are multiply marrying multiple women has not been discussed properly. We need to understand this issue. Yes. Uh, brilliant. Does uh, uh, Marianne Kitain's lead, uh, uh, one of the lead counsel in the case, really giving us an insight of what they are, what's the in depth of this case and what this case but, uh, contains? Remember, this is a story and uh, uh, a case that is coming up by 28th, that is still this month, it will run for four consecutive days where, where Marianne Kitain will be really still con uh, confessing uh, in this case and also. So giving uh, what really transpired during their marriage with the uh, Meru senator, that is Mithika Linturi. For today, we stop it there. Remember, we only report what happens in court. Shiksha. Thank you very much, Lennox Sangre, for that update from the Milimani Law Courts. Miriam Kitani has also told court that she housed uh, Linturi, that is Meru senator, after he defaulted on rent. So the saga on go continues and we will be giving you uh, coverage of that particular court case as it happens right here on K24 TV. Now moving on to other stories where the Public Accounts Investment Committee is currently grilling Nandi, uh, that is uh, Stephen Sang, Nandi governor, and of course we'll be taking you to our reporter to give us the latest on this particular story from Parliament. Good afternoon, Rose. What is the latest? Good afternoon, Shiksha. Rightly put, we're right here at the Pristins of Parliament. Quite a busy day here, despite the members being on recess. And of course, the most important matters of the day has been what has transpired at the National Lands Commission uh, with the chair, Rachel Nyamai, having had to call off this sitting after there was quite uh, some activity that happened in the discussion around the nominees uh, to the National Lands Commission. Quite a heated uh, session there have to be adjourned and of course we'll give you the latest but of course uh, more focus again was on the watchdog committee and this is Senate uh, County Public Accounts and Investment uh, Commission where Nandi Governor Stephen Sang did appear before uh, the commission or the committee and of course there's so many queries especially on the audit statements uh, financial statements for the year 2017-2018 which ended on the 30th of June and of course key in these queries by the committee was the question of 17 million shillings that was actually channeled to the construction of 60 classes of early childhood uh, classes. And of course, uh, the committee was asking how comes he's not able to account for that. But of course, in response and in, in his defense, uh, the governor did say uh, this was actually a challenge and a shortfall from the human resource management of the county. But of course, uh, not impressed. Uh, the committee has therefore invited the ethics and anti-corruption commission ESCC to prop the matter and of course what came out quite clearly has been the usual uh, challenges that have faced various counties when it comes to financial statements and of course the watchdog committee by the senate always has had them hard pressed and away from the issue of the 17 million shillings in the construction of the 60 classes of course we've had the issue of a pending build in this case remember president Uhuru Kenyatta had issued a directive on Madaraka Day asking not only ministries but as well as counties to uh, really expedite in uh clearing the pending bills and of course Nandi County again uh, the governor found himself hard pressed to explain how they had over 700 million shillings in pending bills and where the Auditor General again did say over 400 million shillings uh, lacked supporting documents and therefore there was question validity of these uh, pending bills and other expenses as we have seen in the past uh, for various counties as they appeared before this watchdog committee was the issue of travel expenses in in this case, once again, the Nandi County hard pressed to explain how 4 million shillings was used on members of county assemblies in two incidences, one to the travel of the trade fair exhibition in Jerusalem and one to the Baringo County, amounting to 4 million shillings. And of course, the Auditor General's question was, how did they amount to 4 million shillings in expenses? And being that members of county assembly actually have a different have a different have a different uh, vote and now i'm just joined by a senator who is part of the committee as uh, someone gary perhaps if you can tell us wh wh what are we seeing is it a trend when it comes to the expenses and financial statements of various counties 
Well, uh, I, I don't know really the... Uh, I think the most important thing that we must be looking at, and I think the chair of the Committee of the Public Accounts Committee will make that uh, elucidation, is the fact that uh, when we look at the pending bills and the level of the pending bills and the historical pending bills and the current pending bills, there's a lot to be desired in those accounts. And we need to segregate those accounts to be able to find out what is the critical level of the pending bills and particularly the ISTGR which went into the details of pending bills and the Auditor General's report that has also gone back and re-audited those uh, figures. There is a disparity. Right, of course, the uh, that is from Parliament, where we have Rose Gako giving us an update regarding a Nandi governor, that is Stephen Sang. Currently, well, he did appear earlier on in front of the Public Accounts Investment Committee regarding financial queries in his county. Well, moving on to other stories, where Treasury Acting Cabinet Secretary Ukur Yatani has called on importers to take advantage of the 24-hour working system at uh, the Embakasi internal container depot to clear the cargo. Now, Yatani, who visited the depot Wednesday morning, called on importers to clear their cargo, especially in the evening when there is less traffic, adding that the depot is full automated to ensure the clearing of cargo takes less than six hours. ICD is operating 24 hours. And the challenge is that uh, the, the, the individual importers or uh, you know, uh, owners of the container are not coping with the pace. We want to invite them, we want them to come any time of the day so that they can clear, particularly the off-peak off season, off-peak times, like in the evening, like at night, uh, so that we can really offload and, and clear the containers as fast as they come. We have a pre period of about four days that's given usually free. Uh, ICD has a capacity to process it within six hours. But a lot will also depend on the pressure, uh, the efficiency of the individual uh, container owners. So we are really impressed with the level of modernization, with the you know, uh, technology that has gone into it. And we undertake to improve more by having additional scanners uh, and also uh, IT officers for the KRA so that the processing can be done faster and within the time. All right, moving on to other stories where the fight against cancer in Taita Taveta has received a major boost after a campaign led by County First Ladies Association with representatives from Makweni, Kisumu and Taita Taveta in partnership with Africa Cancer Foundation, Women for Cancer and Roche toured the county. Take a look. Speaking in Wundanyi, County First Ladies Association Chairperson Nazi Kivutha from Makweni said there is need for cancer awareness advocacy at the grassroots due to stigma and lack of information among members of the public leading to increased deaths. Sisi tumesema kuwa tusingo jetu mpaka mtu wa mekufa, mtu wa mbaya najulikana ndiyo tuwanze kupigia kelele. In addition, Taita Taveta Governor Granton Samboja appreciated the association of County First Ladies saying this will be of great help to county governments, adding that the challenge facing most county governments was lack of equipment and specialists, which has forced many cancer patients to travel long distances to seek cancer screening or treatment. I know the equipments are expensive, but Rome was not built in a day. We can start from somewhere uh, by making sure kwamba these equipments kidogo kidogo Ata counties zinaanza kufanya nini kununua. And also, throw back again the challenge to the national government. Because wao ndi wakona mfuku mkubwa pia, yeah. they should actually look at their budgets proper and make sure more money inaweko kwa equipments ndi uzisambazwe kwa counties so that our people can get this services. Taita Taveta First Lady Stella Samboja backed the statement by calling upon more partners to join them in ensuring there is affordable cancer treatment in all 47 counties. We are here to 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 encourage people when there is um, they, they are called upon to the, for screening what wako wanajitokeza watu angalia vile wanakula hali ya maisha tunawaomba sana. Currently 
Over 30 cases of cancer are reported daily at Moi Referral Hospital in Voi, with most being women suffering from cervical cancer. Robbie Omondi, K24 Newscut. Moving on, a family in Siongila, Kitui County, has been forced to sleep in the cold after their house was demolished by another family member over a land dispute. Nicholas Musioka, a father of eight, is now living as a squatter in a neighbor's house. Our reporter, Georgina Magondu, has that story. This is the shell of the house they once lived in, in Siongila, Kitui County. Nicholas Musioka now rendered a squatter together with his family of eight after their relative demolished their house claiming they had settled on their land. The mother of the children was evidently absent with claims she abandoned the family in the face of challenges. The family says they have reported the demolition of their house to the relevant authorities but to no avail after a Kitui court dismissed the case for lack of documentation to prove ownership of the land. Jijina Magundu, K24 Newscut. Now, the Punguza Mizigo Initiative has received a major boost from Wasingishu County Assembly after a meeting held saw the Assembly members endorse amendments to the Constitution, saying it will be of great importance to the country. Jasmine Mamboy has more on that report. During a visit to the County Assembly of Wasingishu, Thadwe Alliance Party leader Ekuru Okot expressed satisfaction at the endorsement of the Punguza Mizigo Initiative by members of the County Assembly. Okot admitted he never expected such support and that he is ready to listen to all counties who may want changes which will benefit the common Mwananchi. Some of the MCs have confirmed to us that if they are not in very good talking terms with the, with the governor, uh, they literally have to beg for Maendeleo. And yet Maendeleo is a right of each and every Kenyan. Which is why we have said, let's now end that story by ensuring that the constitution, the highest law in the land, is protecting these entitlements of the people of Kenya. The leaders vowed that they will not agree to be convinced otherwise by politicians against endorsing the amendment, saying the county is satisfied with the proposed changes. We have invited the members of the public on 27th of uh, this month uh, so that we can also receive their views before we make the final uh, declaration on, on it, which we shall be able to submit to the speakers uh, of the National Assembly and the Senate so that we can proceed with them. They, however, say despite some controversies, they will support the initiative fully and they will be the first to pass the bill when the time to vote comes. Jasmine Wamboy, K24 News Cut. Now, the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, EACC, has ordered Narrow County Government to submit a report on how it plans to implement recommendations of a corruption risk assessment report within one month. Now, Commissioner Dr. Daba Abdi Malim said both the Executive and the Assembly have a month to show the Commission how they will address various shortcomings in their systems which were highlighted as likely to promote graft in the county government. The report listed county departments most prone to misuse as finance, supply chain, human resource, records, business and trade sectors, cooperatives, building plan approvals, ICT, projects physical planning, asset management and transport among others. County officers were warned. And learn. You are head of department. If you have a challenge, call the ACC. Khalid is there. We are here. We are a resource center. If you need guidance, let us help you. And this is really what we expected. We have done all these things, and we have really done a lot. I want to assure you that the board will take up the, re the report and ensure that proper implementation on the recommendation you have, been, you have given today is adhered to. In less than two months, each and everything you have said here has to be done. It's not a case of a roadmap, because roadmap is, is going to be uh, saying that this is what we are going to do. For example, if you are talking about uh, you know, a revenue database and register, th these things are, should be done in a day or two. It's not something which you take, which need to give a roadmap on when it is going to be done. 
Now, the State Department for Social Protection under the Ministry of Labour has kicked off a mass validation exercise aimed at cleaning up its payroll. The purpose of the cleanup, according to Jane Muyanga, a senior officer in the department, is to weed out ineligible beneficiaries and to ensure inclusion of deserving cases. Speaking in Garissa while kicking off the mass validation exercise to clean up its payroll, senior officer in the State Department for Social Protection, Jane Mayanga, said they realized that there was double registration of some beneficiaries. We have realized there are people who are double registered and we need to understand from the ground why is this double registration taking place. And this is more so with uh, the children and the persons with severe disability where these are people who are being taken care of by caregivers. Mm -hmm. So in instances, you find in one caregiver taking care of the two categories. The scenario is uh, these children may have one caregiver but may not belong to one household. So that is basically what we want to establish. Those cases where the children are from one household, then we can exit them from one of the programs. According to Moyanga, they will be working with chiefs and sub-chiefs to help them identify beneficiaries who have died in order to remove their names from the payroll and offer the opportunity to deserving persons. The essence of trying to clean this payroll is to enable us as a ministry to plan for a replacement phase where we are able to say how many beneficiaries have passed on, what are the replacement numbers that need to be done. The program that is currently benefiting over 10,000 people is already active in 15 counties since its rollout. The county is receiving in terms of cash transfer for, uh, to the tune of 249 million Kenya shares going to these uh, individuals in terms of uh, support. So we are, as a county we are great, uh, uh, happy. Late last year, the State Department embarked on migration of legacy beneficiaries of the cash transfer program, CCTP, from card-based payment model to account-based model using four contracted payment service providers. Mombi Okoth, K24 Newscat. And that's a wrap. Thank you for tuning in right here to K24 News. It's an absolute pleasure bringing to you the top stories of the day. My name is Shiksha Arora, joined by our sign language interpreter this afternoon, Walter Sewe. We will do this again tomorrow, same time, same place. Until then, you take care of yourselves and make sure you're still tuned in because coming up next, we have Tony Kualanda as he brings to you the latest sports banter. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>